how sweet your blossoms blooming by the child and if your petals fade and wither our love will last forever I'll always be your beau my Boston Rose my Boston Uh, trim your sideburn? No. <laughs> you cut his ear! You cut my husband's ear! Why don't you watch what you're doing instead of trying to pick up women? I'm not. I mean, what woman would want you anyway? A barber with no looks and no money? Forget it, Romeo. You're a loser. Vic, baby, I like your style. <laughs> when did they let you out? Oh, just yesterday. So you haven't lost your touch. Oh. Hey, come on over later for a few beers. I'm staying at my mother's. I don't think so. I'm going to go check out this new singles joint I hear that is loaded with women. <laughs> Baby. Oh, yeah. Hi, John. Uh, is it okay if I still come over tonight? Sure, but give me an hour. Hi, Don. Hi, Vic. Hey, we gotta keep quiet. My mother's asleep. Want a burger? No. Uh, yeah, I can't stay long. I, I have to get up early. My landlord kicked me out this morning. What are you doing? Taking the meat out. So tell me about that great singles bar, Vic. You struck out, didn't you? Hey, just look at my scrapbook. You know, Don, you should wear red. It makes you look almost like the devil. Almost, Vic? Almost? <laughs> Victor, I am the devil. Uh, since when does the devil live with his mother? Ah. So why'd your landlady toss you out? Uh, same thing as last time. Money. Victor, my boy, I'm afraid you're gonna be poor all your life. Why? Because you have no plans. Oh, yeah, I suppose you do? You bet your ass I do. Okay, what are your plans? Contests. 
Life is one big contest. I've entered 71 of them so far this year. I figured for law of averages, sooner or later, you gotta win. You know, there's probably still hope for you, Victor. I figure you gotta find yourself a rich broad. Forget the romance. It doesn't last. The only thing that lasts is the money. Yes, the room's still available, and it's only a block from Quincy Adams' grave. a smoker, are you? No. Wonderful. I'm Thelma Marshall. Won't you come in? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm Victor Hertz. It uh, certainly looks like a nice neighborhood. Well, it's not. <laughs> Let me show you the room. You know, sometimes it gets darned lonesome. You're not a smoker, are you? So here you can see Montmartre and all the little French cafes. It takes me back a long time. Well, what do you think? I'm asking $35 and not a penny less, but you can have it for $24. Oh, that but first, let me tell you the rules. No smoking, no girls in the house, and no telephoning after 10 p.m. If you can observe these rules, I'll rent you the room tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. w what about tonight? I never do any business on Friday, young man. It's bad luck. Well, the, uh, the rules are fine, but, uh, where will I sleep tonight? Well, you can sleep on the couch. And when you've been here a month, I'll have a key made for you. That's Lincoln. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh. If you're the gentleman I think you are, I'll stay up and have a drink with you one night. But no getting any ideas. I'm very old-fashioned in some ways, you know. I better uh, unload the car. And for one thing, I don't agree with premarital relations. Not unless a couple is engaged. I'll unload the car. Right, and I'll fix the couch for you. I think I could pass 60 or 65. Yeah. Uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Victor. I'm nearly 74. Victor, I do hope I can relax around you. I always dress like this at night. Would you like another drink? Well, I'm kind of tired. Uh, maybe another time. Oh, 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 okay, uh, maybe one more? <laughs> I 
find out how much money she had. No, not yet. You know. Uh, maybe we should try someplace else. You know, I never have any luck around here. Hello, cutie pie. You're cute. Well, come on over and I'll buy you a drink. All right. He's a little on the shy side. Victor. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just trying to think of something to say. Victor, nothing sadder than a little jerk. Just buy her a drink. Victor? No, thanks. Oh, aren't you going to be late for work this morning? No, I'm off today. I have to go into the bank. Which bank? First National. Oh, that's a good one. That's one of my banks. Thanks. Oh, heavens, Victor. You don't think I'd trust just one bank with $225,000, do you? You have $225,000. Hmm. And the house, and a few bonds that uh, I've forgotten all about. But it's got to last me until I die. Thelma, maybe you can help me. Uh, I, I was going to surprise you, but I'm going to buy a new car. And I'd like to borrow the money from you, and it only costs $4,000. Oh, I'm sorry, Victor. Uh, but it might spoil our friendship. You know what they say about lending money to a friend? Yeah, but I thought that I was a special friend. Oh, so you are. And I've got a nice surprise for you. A surprise? I've made you a key. <laughs> Thanks. I don't want it. Why not? Because I'm moving out. Excuse me, could you tell me how Thelma Marshall is? Someone will be right with you. Are you with Mrs. Marshall? Excuse me, are you with Thelma Marshall? Yeah. Well, she's going to be all right. She must mean a lot to you. You'll never know how much. 
What's your name? Uh, Victor. Hello, Victor. I'm Betty. Look, there's nothing you can do here. Sweet of you to drive me home. Oh, that's all right. We both had a long day. What's wrong with your car? Uh, it's uh, not mine. Belongs to a friend. Oh. You know. Your landlady's lucky you were there when she passed out. She might have died. You mean that I saved her life? That's what the doctor said. Huh. How about that? <laughs> If it had been anybody else other than Thelma, I probably would have gotten a reward. Just be glad you could help, Victor. It's not every day we can save someone's life. I thought you were compassionate. I am. I'm very passionate. <laughs> uh. Will you go out with me tomorrow night? Would you go to church with me on Sunday? Agreed. And stop worrying about your landlady. She'll be home in no time. I'm sorry that I got angry with you. But uh, it was a good thing I was there to uh, save your life, huh? Thank you, Victor. And now I'm going to do something nice for you. Oh, no, you don't have to do anything nice for me. I'm just glad that you're coming home. What are you, what are you going to do for me? Well, from now on, Victor, you'll need not pay any rent. And you can stay in my house as long as you want. No, that's not what I want. Well, what do you want, Victor? Cash. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. Now, you do realize that I did save your life. Twenty dollars? You know, if I hadn't called that ambulance, you'd probably be dead right now. How much? Uh... Four thousand dollars? Oh, Victor, why don't you take the free rent? A hundred dollars. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Fix everything in the house at once, fixing. Yeah. You'll be in by 10 p.m. every night. Uh huh. And you'll pay me back a hundred dollars a month plus the rent. You got a deal, sweetie.
score pick. Not the big time yet, but it's a score. You know, if we do this right, we can make out real good. Do what right? You get her to make out a will, leaving everything to you. Uh-huh, uh -huh. and then what, we kill her? No, we don't kill her. We just make sure she gets the flu or something. That's nice. And you want, uh... 25%. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that that has possibilities, Don, uh, but I would like to name the percentage, and I think it should be 10%. Okay. I'm not greedy. Do you need a fishing license for your car? Uh, not unless you want to fish. <laughs> but it's red and it's got propellers and it, uh, you have to make sure the doors are closed. It's a beautiful car, Victor. But wasn't that generous of Thelma lending you all that money? Uh, yeah, well, some people are like that. Besides, she's probably grateful for me saving her life and all, you know. <laughs> Isn't this lovely, Victor? It's so Chinese. Yeah, uh, you have the customers. So, what do religious girls do? Just like other girls. We like to walk on the beach, we like to go for picnics, and we like to screw. <laughs> I didn't mean to shock you. It's just that some fellows get the wrong idea when they find out you're religious. Sorry. I just didn't want you to lose interest, that's all. See, I was married once and I got used to sex and I enjoy it. I'm a good Christian, but I can't hide my feelings. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Not only that, it gives you a good reason to, to go to church. Victor, that's not a finger ball. Ow! 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 Okay. Are we ready? gonna sit around and wait for that poor old woman to die is money really that important to you no not to me but it is to everybody else they won't do anything for me unless i give them money you don't have to give me any money you know i like you betty I like you a lot. <laughs> great, that's a hell of a response. That's just great. I'm sorry. It was the ketchup. I heard you, and I'm glad. You know, you're not supposed to put ketchup on Chinese food. You haven't kept your promise, and I want my money back. Who do you 
murder. Velma, it's late. I have to get up early tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? But tomorrow's Sunday. Why do you have to get up so early? Because I am going to church. But that's not good enough. I want my money back. wasn't so bad, was it? No, I uh, liked the nice sermon. Hello, partner. Well, if it isn't the alcoholic extortionist, what are you doing? I hear it's a great place to meet rich widows. Uh, who's the lovely lady? You've been hiding things from me, Vic. Uh, this is Virginia. She's from Colorado. She's on vacation. She'll be going back tomorrow. You're still married, right? What are you doing here? Oh, it's part of your probation. Uh-huh. He's a great kidder. Uh, what is your name? Betty. Oh, Betty. Hello. How are you? I'm proud of you, Vic. Hey, when are you going to fix me up with some of that action you owe me? You fix me up with that one, and I'll wipe the slate clean. That one is off limits. Believe it or not, the level. Okay, okay. What about the will? You working on it? Yeah. For a change, I think you got a good idea. Uh, take care of Victor for me, Betty, or Virginia, or whatever. Do you and your friend always put each other down like that? Yeah, we were just kidding. Besides, I didn't want him to know that you were a nurse. We never get rid of him. Why not? Well, he's got this weird disease. <laughs> uh, he's always looking for medical advice. Especially if it's free. <laughs> he likes nurses. It's worth part for the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? She's with me. We're friends of Victor's. We met in church. Oh. Well... We have to be going now. It's been awfully nice meeting you, ma'am. I want my money back. You haven't kept your word. You were out half the night and you haven't fixed anything in the house. I, I asked uh, you uh, to. Uh, 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 uh. fixed fan. Oh, don't blow any more. It sucks. Besides which, everybody steals from me. I can't trust anyone anymore. Even the mailman doesn't bring me any mail. No, don't talk like that. We'll just... We'll go for a ride in the new car, take you to Chinese food, we'll go out for dinner. Oh, you mean you'll take me out on a date? Sure. Oh, that would be lovely. Oh, I would like to go on a date. We could get Chinese food. Don't worry, Selma. Nobody is taking anything from anybody. Oh, thank you for a wonderful dinner, sweetie. Well, it was my pleasure. Of course, it wasn't a real date. Yeah? What do you mean? Well, if it had been a real date, you'd have taken me somewhere to get into my... You idiot! Are you all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Victor, uh, do you like a hot number? Huh? Well, that's what my husband Charlie used to call it, a hot number. Uh, you mean, uh... Yes, but we've got to wait until we get home. I certainly enjoyed dinner. Uh, so we're still friends. Of 
course we are. Victor, would you like me to change into something more comfortable? I mean, like they do after the late show. <laughs> no, uh, I would like to talk to you. Uh, you said that you were alone. Do you have any relatives? Well, I've got one niece living in Texas, but I haven't seen her for years. Is she the one who gets the money? What do you mean? What money? When you die. Is she, is she on the will? Oh, I haven't made any will. I'm not going to die, not yet anyway. I go after my mother. She lived to be nearly a hundred. Poor dear, she wanted so badly to reach a hundred. Mm, well, uh, what happened to her, a heart attack? No, a truck. It's, it's too bad. <laughs> so you see, there's no will. I'll worry about that when I'm 98. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your niece? Is she poor like me? <laughs> My niece, Lucy? Oh, no. She owns an oil well and a rich husband. <laughs> That's great. Why don't you make out a will and leave all your money to me? But what about my niece? She's loaded, and besides, she didn't save your life, did she? Victor, I think you've got a good idea. If you'll pay for it, I'll do it. Agreed. Money is no object. <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow. If you'll do something for me tonight. Now, you're sure you understand, right? Of course I do, Victor. Uh, which hat shall I wear? What are you going to tell your lawyers? That you're an old friend and that I've known you for years. And that I saved your life. Why do I have to say all these things, Victor? Because, Thelma, lawyers are dumb and they only know what you tell them. Your call, madam. Hello, Aunt Thelma. Lucy! Well, how's Houston? You're not. You are! Oh, that's wonderful! Yes, yes, I'll be here. Okay, darling. Bye! Oh, Victor, guess what? Lucy's in town. She's coming over. Okay, uh... Just don't mention the will. That'll be our little secret. Anything you say, Victor. But we can't go for the will just now. Because guess what? Lucy's in town and she's coming over. Okay. <gasps> Just don't mention the will. Oh, and there's one other thing that you can do for me. Well, what's that? Write me a love letter. Oh, okay. Victor, you're so romantic. Hmm. Dear Victor, I've been laying on the couch fantasizing about you. What I really need is your young, hard body to do the job. Uh, you're hot-blooded whore, Thelma. I'm not a whore. Of course you're not, but uh, that's the way that lovers talk to each other these days. Oh, it's no wonder the young people are so mixed up. They don't know how to sweet talk. But uh, why did you want me to write a dirty letter? Okay, just write whatever you want. You have a servant. Oh, no, that's Victor. He's my rumor. A rumor? 
You mean you spent all your money and now you have to take in rumors? Oh, of course not. You know how your aunt watches her pennies. And Thelma, please, must we talk in front of him? That's all right, Thelma. I'm going to give you gals some privacy. I'm just going to sit on the porch. I was on my way to New York and got your letter that you were in the hospital. And I just had to stop and see my favorite aunt. Your only aunt. Aunt Thelma, I brought you a present all the way from Paris. What? Ooh, what is it? Why, it's a wig, silly. It cost me a fortune, but I don't mind. It'll make you look ten years younger. And before I forget, I want to talk to you about making a will. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Victor said I wasn't to discuss it with anyone. Is that man in your will? Yes, of course. He's paying for it. Oh, he is, is he? And how long have you known him? Mm, about a month. And how well do you know this, Victor? Well... To tell you the truth, he's my boyfriend. You mean... Yes! Isn't it wonderful? So, you're Victor. The degenerate barber that's sleeping with my 73-year-old aunt. And you're Lucy, the fat asshole from Texas. You listen to me, mister. She's my blood relative. She owes me. And no third-rate Casanova is going to take money that belongs to Lucy Hawthorne. Now, I don't have time to argue. Clear out, and I'll give you 5,000 cash. You, you, you can't buy me. All right. I'll go as high as 10,000. I'll take it. Good. I thought so. I'll be here tomorrow at noon with the money. You be ready with your car pack. Agreed. Good day, Victor. Ah 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 ah! Betty. Victor? What is it? What's wrong? Sorry to bother you tonight, but I uh, have to make a big decision tomorrow and I need to know something tonight. Oh, uh, here. There you go. No what? If it were possible, would you marry me? I mean, you know, if it were possible. Victor, are you proposing? Oh, no, I can't propose, not tonight. But if it were possible, would you marry me if I was poor? Uh, and I am. Victor, this is awfully sudden. But I'll think about it. Victor? Aren't you going to do something? Do what? Victor. If you're having fun with me... No, no, I, I can't ask until tomorrow. And what happens tomorrow? I think I'm going to get $10,000. Victor. You can't do it. I, I can't do what? I don't know, but whatever it is, it's illegal, and you'll go to jail. Oh, it's not illegal, it's just a bribe. Victor. Do you know how dumb that sounds? No, it's, it's the truth, and it's legal. I just had to ask you to marry me first. I needed to know that you'd have me poor. Poor Victor.
son of a bitch. Victor, baby, take a look at this window. Boy, you'd be amazed what you see up here on the roof. <laughs> you, you, you are really something. Everybody is working this morning. You're up here, you're looking for action. Wow. That's one couple that's working overtime, huh? Hey, Vic, look what they're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Look, I got to talk to you about something that's important. Important? Okay, I'll meet you this afternoon. So that's it. That Lucy would tear that phony will apart. So we're going to have to settle for 10 grand. There's another way, Vic. Sure. Marry the old broad. Victor, baby, that's just what you're going to do. And I'll organize the whole thing. For, let's say 15%. What about my girl? What about Betty? Vic, we're talking big time here. I, I know. I love her. What happened to your other girls? What went wrong there, Vic? Was it money? You want to keep Betty? You got to marry the old broad. <laughs> You're late, lover boy. My offer just went down a thousand dollars. The deal's off. I know what you want. You want more money. How much? Where's Thelma? She's not home. But where is she? Don't worry. She's not cheating on you. I've arranged for her to see a doctor. I want Thelma to live to be a very old lady. Don't you, Victor? You know... You might find this hard to believe, Lucy, but I happen to like the old girl. Now, when's she coming back? Not till five o'clock. And, um, we have the whole place to ourselves. Why so quiet? I'm trying to think of how to say this. Oh, Victor. No, no, it's, uh, it's not what you think. Um, look, I love you and I want to marry you. But first, I have to marry that old lady first, okay? Fine. Then why don't you take me home? Well, I'm doing this for us. For us? Yes, yeah, so that we can have a big house all paid for, money in the bank. Victor, you're such a dummy. We can have a big house and money in the bank, but... You'll have to work for it. You're lazy, Victor. That's your problem. And what does marry her for a little while mean? Are you planning on killing her? Do you think that I could do something like that? No. Look, she's 75. She's almost 80. She's got a bad heart. Uh, lots of other bad organs. And what if she wants to sleep with you? No, no. That's less bad for the heart, too. I mean, she was lost to you. Know. Take me no, home, Victor. You no, know, uh, you know how temporary this is. You know how much I love you. You don't love me. I do love you. It's poverty I hate. Victor, I've got some bad news. According to her doctor... Looks like the old gal's not going to make it. Really, what's wrong with Thelma? A well, nurse said that she could kick off from stroke, heart failure, kidney trouble, any time. And she's been passing blood. Look, we're running out of time, Victor. First, you got to take her down to the license bureau. Then you got to wait three days before you marry her. And by that time, she'll start to smell. Is any of this stuff contagious? How would I know? I'm only getting 15%. Okay, this is Friday. Uh, we'll get the license this afternoon. We'll get married on Monday. You really going to do it? Yep. And if she goes as fast as you say, you get your 20%. God, 
It's me, Victor. I'm gonna need your help. I can't marry both of them, so I'm gonna leave it up to you. I'm gonna flip this coin, God. And if it comes up heads, then I'll know that you want me to marry Thelma. Okay? God, I think that this is important, so I think that we should make it two out of three. I don't think that you understand, God. Thelma's a very sick old lady, and I can help her at least for a little while. I know you're busy. I bet you overlooked that, right? So we'll flip again. Uh, yeah, I know what it was. I was thinking tails. That's it. I said heads, but I was thinking tails. So just to prove it, we'll, we'll flip again. Why should I mix you up? I know what you want. I'll do it. Thelma, I have to ask you something. What's wrong? I've just had this letter from Lucy's doctor, and it, it says that I'm mentally crazy and can't look after my own money, and he wants to put me away. Oh, Victor... Can she really do it? I don't know. Well, you are nearly 74. They might think that you'd be better off in a crazy house. Oh, but I don't want to go to a crazy house. Oh, what can I do? Well, they couldn't put you away if you were married. Married? You're sure, uh... You would have a husband to look after you. Victor, are you proposing? <sighs> yes. Victor! Okay, okay. We'll get the marriage license and the blood test today. We'll hide up for the weekend and we'll get married on Monday. Tuesday's Halloween and it's my birthday. I want to get married on Tuesday. It'll be good luck. We'll do it on Tuesday. Why do we have to hide away for the weekend? So that Lucy won't find us. See, she's going to try to stop us, but by Tuesday it'll be too late. I know a great motel in Salem. Come on, treat her. It'll be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to deal with another storm. Oh, but Victor, you're right. This is so romantic. Yeah, and I have the room right next door. Next door? Do you mean to say we've got separate rooms? Oh, yeah, it's uh, very bad luck for the bride to see the groom before the wedding. Oh. It, I'm going to be alone all the whole weekend. Not the whole weekend, just. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. The phone is right there if you need to talk, and if you uh, need anything, I'll be there. Thelma, from now on, I'll always be there. So sweet, Victor. Can you connect me with 555 Thank you. Sweetheart, hi, I've got to talk to you. Where are you? Well, I'm at Captain Jackson Salem. Are you with her? With Thelma? Yeah, she's right next door. And I'm sorry, Victor, there's nothing to talk about. You've made your choice. I hope you're happy. No, 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 listen. Listen, I gotta, I gotta tell you. Hi, 
Sweetheart, I've got to see you. I'll be right over. Thelma, uh, no, no, stay, 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 stay there. But I thought you wanted to see me. Uh, I thought so too, but uh, just hearing your voice, uh, he's scared. Besides, we can talk on the phone. We're, we're doing it right now. <laughs> Victor, I don't like it here. Yeah, no, neither do I, but just uh, wait till Tuesday and then we'll get the wedding license. It's then the storm will be. You've been gone all day. Why did you take so long? It's a hurricane, Thelma. It's insane out there. Do you think we're safe here? I don't know. It looks like the whole motel is moving closer to the beach. Uh, I gotta call you back. Crazy going out in a hurricane. Aren't you glad to see me? <sighs> I had to see you. Take this off. You must be soaking. <laughs> You're wonderful. <laughs> Victor, are you married? No, uh, not till tomorrow. It's her birthday. And there's nothing I can do to change your mind. Uh, look, honey, you're a maid. That's $225,000 coming through that door. Don't let me down. Victor! I heard you talking to someone. Yeah, well, of course you heard me talking to someone. I mean, you know, look at this room. I was yelling at the uh, nurse, maid. Maid? She's a maid? Yeah, that's, that's what I said. I mean, you know, they must never clean up around the day around here. I mean, she's probably a trainee. I mean, look at this room. That's not what I came for. There's a frog in my room, and I'm scared of frogs. Besides which, I, I don't feel too well. Frog! Oh, my gosh, she died. She's just fainted, Victor. But we should take her to a hospital. She has a fever. Uh, Victor, I'm not feeling too good. Why is a maid taking my temperature? I want to go home. Uh, Thelma, the maid thinks that we should go to the hospital. I'll go with you. No, uh, you go home. I, I may need you there. I'll call. It's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Thelma, I'm going to take care of you. Fiance. That old woman is your fiance? Go ahead. Get him the hell out of here. Go. Let's go. And if I see him in here again, shoot the son of a bitch. Read my lips. No. No, they're not gonna go higher than 25%. Okay, buddy. 25%. Get on over here and bring the marriage license. Whoa, oh, uh, I left it at the motel. I'll pick it up. I'll bring it right over. I've been waiting. 
waiting for you. Oh, well, if it isn't Lucy. How'd you find us? Money, honey. You can do anything with money. Forget something, Victor? Why don't you give me that purse? You can't have it. What, you think that I can't take that? I think you should take that up with Bruno. Bruno? Victor, I'd like you to meet Bruno. Ah! Bruno is sort of an electrician. He's going to put your lights out. Did you get that, Victor? Oh, yeah, you're going to get it. Now, Bruno. Oh, that was my leg. He's over there. Should have got rid of this. My leg, you lousy pervert. This is all your fault. Thomas house. It's over near Quincy Center. We're gonna need a rope. A rope? We can't very well walk out the front doors of the hospital with her. We're gonna need a good rope. How high is she? Three stories, about 30 feet. Okay. We lower her down. Drive off. You get married. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Except she's not allowed visitors. And if the guard sees me, I'll get shot. Don't worry. That's the second part of my plan. And for this, I get 68 grand, right? Oh, yeah, but there's one string. Don't tell me. Let me guess. I've got to stay away from Betty. I don't want to talk to her. There's one girl that is not going in your scrapbook. And another thing, I don't like these tits. They're too lumpy. I'll find the tits. Just try the wig on. There you go. Now here's how we do it, Nick. If anybody stops us, we just flew in from Texas to visit your poor, dying aunt. Let's just hope the old lady is still dying. You are a heartless mother. Yes, I am. But at least I'll admit it. I suppose you're hoping she gets better. to the hospital you think this wreck will make it sure it will i realize it's not a new car like yours but then again i haven't gotten around to sleep with any old ladies yet <laughs> look at this hurricane i don't think i've ever been as close to one 
You know, I always wanted to be in the eye of a hurricane. All of a sudden, it's quiet. No wind, no rain. Why? I don't know. Just to say I was there. Hey, look at that. Hey, forget it. I just figure she might be grateful. And you call me a heartless mother. Well, maybe I am, but I'm paying you a lot of money for your cooperation. So for the next couple of hours, no booze and no girls, okay? Okay, okay. But maybe I wouldn't be so horny if you kept your dress down and act like a lady. Heartless mother. Just like we own the place. Why can't we use the back stairs? Stairs are for crooks. We're going to do this the right way. Excuse me. My wife and I are looking for Thelma Marshall. Thelma Marshall? Yes. She's a patient of Dr. Schwartz. Oh, yes. She's in the West Wing. If you'll follow me, please. to sneak him in. The doctor thinks Victor's a creep. Get away from me. You're scared. We're going to get you out of here. Hey, Vic. This chick's dead. Was it us? We haven't been here long enough to kill her. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Got one more problem. You can't see a lady out the window in a storm. She'll blow away. Uh, okay, so how do we get her out of the hospital? I'll go out and check the halls. You get your girlfriend ready to go. Okay. Look, sweetie, we're gonna we're gonna get you out now, okay? But how are you going to get me out? Oh, we're just going to uh, go down the staircase or uh, out the window. Halls are almost clear. We can take her out the front door and make a run for it. What are we going to do now? You were going to back me up, now what? Make a run for it, Vic. Who's back stairs? Why is it so quiet in here? It's a cardiac ward. It's supposed to be quiet. I guess. It's kind of spooky. It's not quiet in here. It's quiet out there. Let's go. Even God wants us to get married. Stop the hurricane for us. God didn't stop the storm, Vic. This is the one place I always wanted to be. In the eye of the hurricane. Schwartz. It's okay, sweet face. We'll have you down in the flash.
Mr. Schwartz is coming with the guard. He'll take care of you. Poor woman. Do you realize I have a woman in the next room who's dying? Well, do you realize you have a woman in this room that's dead? Do you realize it's quite possible that you killed this woman? She's been dead for hours. Well, maybe you didn't do this one, but I've got one next door who's receiving the last rites, and I know you're the cause of that one. The last rites? Who's giving them? Priest? Of course he's a priest. Think. Priest can marry people. Where are you going? doing father we need your help we have two people in this room and they want to get married can you help us father positively not hey this is the police department open the door so i'll take it down okay mister are you going to open the door There's nothing you can say. Father, you've got to talk to me. In private. My friends just want to get married. And if you don't help them, you're going to need a priest. You can't marry them. It's not legal. Dearly beloved, will you, Victor, take Melba to be your lawfully wedded wife? What happened to hope? Oh, Victor, you dumb father! Sickness and health Will you tell me to take this man to be your lawfully wedded wife? We haven't divulged from this day forward. I hereby pronounce you man and wife. You're the best best man in the world. Another 5%? Is that all? A lousy 5%? Oh, don't worry, sweetie. It's all a mistake. Everything's gonna be all right. Wedding congratulations. You think about us in the paper? Oh, yes, there is. In the people column. Oh, here it is. Uh, congratulations to Victor Hertz, 35, and the former Thelma Marshall, 73, who were married in Salem Hospital one week ago today. The trick-or-treat couple <laughs> had a bridal shower provided by Hurricane Gloria. Isn't that cute, Victor? Hello. Hello, Vic. How's the newlywed? Not too good. That's funny. You should feel great. You're famous, you know. I always knew you were out of your mind. And now the whole town knows it. Well, screw everybody in town and you two if that's why you called. No, I've got something important to talk to you about. What's wrong with you? I think I'm getting the flu or something. That's great. Why don't you come over? I'll be over in a few minutes. Bye. Look at that. That was Don. He's coming right over. Where's our checkbook? Oh, a checkbook? Well, what does he want? I uh, have to write him a check. Uh, I owe him some money. Oh, well, my checkbook is in the bureau in the metal box with my other papers. And don't forget to bring my pen. And, oh, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, you're spending far too much money. I shall have to not give you such a big allowance if you keep on like this. Oh, and besides which, your laundry bill is getting very high. And to do it. Oh, and by the way, Victor, I don't know why you're using so much electricity. And not only do there's far too much capital for you, you know, all this is costing me and all the understand this thing. 
tell me you're a liar. What do you mean? Why did you lie about your age? Is that all? Well, I always lie about my age. Women are allowed to do that, you know. Yeah, sure, I know that women lie about their age, but they usually say that you're younger. You said that you were 74. Your birth certificate says that you're 64. Why did you lie? Because I like compliments, that's why. What the hell does that mean? Well, when people ask me how old I am, and I say I'm 73, they say how good I look. And I like that, that's why. The things that I get. You know, I thought that you'd be grateful that I married you. You married me because you thought I was a goner. Well, I'm gonna be here for a long time, Victor. Okay, all right, calm down. I think that Don's here. Well, you go along and play with your friend. I'm going to have a bath. Hiya, Vic. Hey, come on inside. Thelma's about to take a bath. First, I want you to kiss her hello. You mean kiss her goodbye, don't you? Yeah. Vic, sit down. I want to talk to you. Yeah. How's your mouth? Four stitches, but it's worth it to get rid of Aunt Lucy. <laughs> the cops arrested her. That's swell, Vic. Hey, hey, listen, let's go inside. Tell me. I can't do it. I've done a lot of crummy things in my life, but I've never killed anybody. I'll be damned, the crookedest man in town, and now he finds religion. What kind of hoodlums he hanging out with anyway? Vic. I wanted to talk to you man-to-man -man about oh, this. Oh, you bastard. Don't you remember our agreement? I told you to stay away from her. I know, Vic. I just couldn't help myself. Oh, I can see it all now. You marry me to the old bag so that you can move in on Betty. It's not going to work, Betty thinks that you're a creep. Vic, we're getting married. <sighs> what? I knew you wouldn't believe me, so I brought Betty along. You can have the money, Vic. That old lady ain't gonna die. She's gonna keep right on having birthdays. Hi, Betty. I read about your wedding in the paper. You're famous, you know. How's your wife? Oh, fine. I married her and she's ten years younger. So now you hang around and wait for her to die? What about Don? You mean about us getting married? Mm -hmm. He asked me. What'd you say? I said I'd think about it. You're doing this to get even, right? No, I'm not, Victor. I need somebody. And I think Don needs somebody. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a backstabber. I'm his best friend. Look what he did to me. Victor, you haven't seen the real Don. He has a gentle side. Yeah, he's also got an album with all of the girls that he's had. You're not going to be his wife. You're going to be number 87. And if you think he's going to stop that close to 100, you're crazy. Well, maybe he was a little wild. The people can change. You changed. Yeah. Sure did. For the first time in my life, I realized the importance of money. Don doesn't have any. No, and he never will. He'll never have anything. He'll have me. What can you wait for me? I love you, Victor. But you're a married man. A 
funny world, isn't it? Yeah. Even a funny world has a share of bad jokes. Goodbye, Victor. I think your husband just left you. Oh, well, I always thought he'd leave me for a younger woman. Come on, Thelma. I'll walk you inside. You know, Thelma, some people just can't be trusted. the gold round his throat trying to reel in that stone face brunette well if she turns out the kind who be caught on his line I suppose she deserves what she gets take that geeky little nothing with his eyes on that big blonde ain't got an atheist prayer you can bet don't make no point for being eager when you're just a little eager, I suppose he deserves what he gets. It's a dance that's been done since the clock started running. A system that's flourished and thrived. Full of losers, liars, and so many cross wires. It's a miracle the species survives. See that streamlined little redhead in the strapless, bagless gown. Ain't got that one quite figured out yet Whether she's dressed for depravity Or justifying gravity I suppose she deserves what she gets A little schema put the moves on that old day till matrimonial conditions are met. Thought she croaked and he'd be wealthy. Granny fooled him and stayed healthy. Now you know he deserves what he gets. 
Yeah.